This is the Cortlands Hotel in Hove. Its owner uses it to run a business empire he says is worth around 800 million pounds. It spans three continents, encompassing property, mines, farms, art, shares and money lending. His name is Nicholas van Hoogstraten. Everyone at the hotel calls him Nick and he's asked me to do the same. One of Britain's richest and most infamous men. He said I could come down and make a film about him as long as I had a sense of humor. Have you been happy previously with films that have been made about you? Um, largely, yes, yes. I mean, they've normally tried to stitch me up, but not very successfully. Because I've got nothing to hide and won't give a fuck anyway. It's entertaining for the public, that's all that matters. Doesn't it? <laughs> this is also where Nick was arrested three years ago, following the murder of businessman Mohammed Raja. Good evening. A multi millionaire property developer who often behaved as if he was above the law has been found guilty at the Old Bailey of manslaughter. Van Hoogstraten dispatched his henchman to Mohammed Raja's home at Sutton in Surrey. They stabbed and shot him. His sentencing has been delayed so that he can be psychiatrically assessed. The judge warned he was considering giving him a life term. Nick was finally sentenced to 10 years in prison. But a year and a half later, he was back in court. Nicholas van Hoogstraten, the property tycoon who was jailed for the manslaughter of a business rival, is tonight a free man. He'd won the right to a retrial. Now the case against him is being thrown out completely. Today's judgment finally brings to an end Nicholas van Hoogstraten's quest for justice and vindication from an accusation that was always based on the most tenuous circumstantial evidence. His release marked the beginning of a new legal battle. The first time I filmed Nick was at the High Court, almost a year after his release. He was still due back £150 million of confiscated assets and £5 million paid to the dead man's family. So did it go much as you'd hoped, Nick? Well, to be quite honest, I wasn't particularly bothered one way or the other, really. Why is that? Because I know... I always play for the end game. I'm not interested in, in the battles and skirmishes. So what's the end game? Well, the end game is I get everything and win everything, don't I? I mean, it's obvious what the end game is. When convicted, Nick was portrayed as a simple figure of hate. The landmarks in his villainous life story repeated over and over. Dealing stamps professionally at school, he was a millionaire by 22. And a year later, jailed for a hand grenade attack on a business associate. Later on, he'd helped encourage his growing reputation. When described as a slum landlord with a hatred for tenants, he gave the quotes. Tenants of filth. He built a palace on his estate and barred the public right of way. Ramblers, they're scavengers, trespassing, if you like, on other people's land and property. And crucially, He'd admitted on television that he was probably ruthless and probably violent. I go for direct personal retribution. I think I've gone on public record in the past as saying that I've had his b chopped off. If there was a good side to Nicholas van Hoogstraten, he'd kept it to himself. It can't have been that long ago since you were in one of those. That, as, I, as I saw it, that's what I was thinking. I was having sympathy for the, uh, for the inmates that were in it, or about to be picked up. But standing with his son, Rhett, eldest of his five children, I was reminded he'd trained as a Samaritan while in prison. Maybe he'd changed. OK, right, so we'll see you Thursday, yeah? Yeah, see you Thursday. All right, All right thank you. OK. All right, all right, all right. The psychiatrist who gave Nick the pre-sentence assessment had said it would take years to understand him. I had about four months.
So you keep all your envelopes? Uh, yeah, we reuse them. We either use them for internal transfer memos and things, or in, in some cases even for external, depends. And I, I don't know whether you noticed, but I also use the backs. Use, you know, backs of letters or used pieces of paper. We don't waste anything. There's too much, too much waste in the world. So you do it for ecological reasons? I wouldn't say we do it for ecological reasons, but it's obviously part of it. That's not uppermost in my mind. What's uppermost? Not uppermost in my mind is saving money, of course, not wasting money. That's the difference between people that have made their money and people that have inherited it. So what position does your son here fall into? Uh, at the moment, it's inherited wealth. He, he, he wastes money and spends money and doesn't think about it. But we're hoping that that's going to change. So are you here to learn your dad's business? Yes, please. Um, yeah, I'd like him really to shadow me and find out everything that's going on. But, but it's, it's, it's a difficult task. Because I keep everything close to my chest. Nothing's in writing, nothing's, there's no records or anything. So how's he doing so far? Um, yeah, he's doing, he's doing fine. Well, he's my boy, isn't he? So, you know, what am I going to say? What do you expect me to say? I'm obviously biased. Nick was born in West Sussex, which is still where most of his British property can be found. When in England, he lives at a secret location in Hove. His children visit, but their mothers or his girlfriends aren't allowed. Most nights, he works late at the hotel. Well, so I'll spend a bit of time dealing with this. What have you got there? An auction catalogue for jewellery, which will be for my sister and my girlfriends. So who is your current girlfriend? <laughs> I can't tell you that. I've got a current girlfriend. I've actually got four. So I've decided safety in numbers. So you really got four? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I've got four. And, and they all know, so there's no... I'm not hiding anything. And they don't mind? Well, obviously they mind, but... I mean, with me, it's not much good minding, is it? I mean, I'm sure you know, with me, you have to put up with it or, or you know, fuck off. Doesn't matter who you are. So what have you got to think that makes them put up with that? Sorry? What have you got... Oh, no, no, I'm not just talking about... I'm not talking about girlfriend. I'm talking about generally. I mean, anybody doing business with me, anybody doing anything with me at all, that, that I do things my way and people don't like it, then they can fuck off because, because I'm the um, oasis in the desert of everything I'm dealing with and, you know, bollocks to the rest of the world. That's the way I am, that's the way I've always been, and I'm not going to change. But, but at least I let everybody know that in advance, you see. That's why I'm known as the lender of last resort, because if you come to me, you're going to deal with me on my terms, and, and I want my money. You know, I'm, not, I'm not having lending money just for one year, and then after 11 months they say, oh, can we, can we pay you in another year? because then we, we get into a def default and a penalty situation and uh, I'll get a bit, um, well, <laughs> it becomes very, very expensive or onerous for the borrower. Every day of the week, Nick's up early and seeing how much more money he's made overnight. Any good financial news this morning? Yeah, gold's up again. That's all I need to know. Why are you using those when you can use the big pot? Which is more economical. Is that your pot? Don't mind you dipping into my pot, as long as before we get anywhere near the bottom of it, you ensure there's a replacement. You always hate waste. I think it's a crime. 
Oh, we've got a, an enormous pot of marmite here, which I buy because I buy the biggest pot because it's the cheapest. You know, you get the best value for money. Right? And we also buy it, you know, obviously where it's, where it's at a discount price anyway. And he's using the little tiny portions there. The cost of that is something like five times the cost of that. What do you think of that, Rick? given how wealthy your dad is? Well, he thinks I'm mad, probably, like most people do. Yeah, I think sometimes it's a bit over the top. But then it's just how it is. And he's been like that all his life. It's not going to change, is it? I'll be doing the same with the honey, actually, because I've got pots of honey upstairs. After breakfast, Rhett sent to pick up mail from a series of Nick's business addresses dotted around Hove. The letters are addressed to companies with names like Tombstone, Right Profit and Rare Bargain. Nick deals with them all himself. So you keep all the stamps as well? Oh, yeah. Philately was the foundation of my empire. Got me into property and mining and all sorts of other areas. One of the letters carried news of his property's return. We just received notification from the sequestrators that the sequestration assets are to be handed back by 4pm on the 30th. <laughs> that must make you happy. It's sometimes better to travel than it is to arrive. It's not that what Nick gets makes him happy. It's that what he hasn't got makes him unhappy, especially if it's been taken from him. Dave driving kept Nick's empire ticking over when he was inside. This is the first house Nick's got back. If it's been damaged, it will be the start of a fight for compensation. Looks like a bed sit in the old days from Notting Hill. <laughs> Found a coin. <laughs> Every trump city yeah, I even, I even do it in Zimbabwe. Yeah, Can you imagine? People, people leave the coins even in their flats and houses down there. Why do tenants do that? Well, they've, they've, because, because they're not like us. Because, because well, what kind of a person is a tenant? Mm. That's what it boils down to. They don't look after their money like we do. Look at the state of the stair carpet. <laughs> ah, cleaners. What kind of people are occupying it at the moment? Well, they're probably not the sort of people that we've we, we would have rented to. Because a building of this quality, you only rent to quality people. You just, you know, that's a classic sign of the sort of people that are here. Look, dirty fingerprints all over the place. Do you get compensation or...? Well, it will all be part of the claim, yes. It will be a mismanagement claim. I mean, here again, you see, there's, there's damp being allowed to come in here. At the time of England's controversial cricket tour, Nick also went to Zimbabwe. He would have taken me, but the BBC is banned by Mugabe's government, a policy Nick approves of. In the years leading up to independence, when it was known as Rhodesia, he started buying up mines and farms. Now he is a prominent supporter of President Mugabe's fight against residual white privilege, yet is the country's biggest private landowner. Nick says he rules his million acres like a benevolent dictator. He's built schools for his workers' children and claims a reputation as a generous boss. He flew back just before Christmas. Your trip, uh, not so good as usual. A lot of stress and aggravation down there this time, mainly with the the workforce. We went on a 
on one of the farms, or the one on the big farm, they went on a two-day work stoppage, illegal work stoppage, stirred up by the unions. How did you deal with it? Huh, how did I deal with it? Well, I basically, inverted commas, gave in to their demands. But um, then I've withdrawn. They're not, none of them are getting Christmas bonuses this year. And down there, they're quite hefty because we normally give what's called a 13th cheque, which is the equivalent of a month's wages. And with effect from 1st of January, I'm withdrawing the, their meat ration. They were getting um, between four and eight kgs of prime beef a month, free. You know, we just used to give it as a, as a freebie. They're not getting that anymore. And that, that will cost them, um, in Zimbabwe terms, um, 260, 270,000. That's Zim dollars, which is like 30 pounds in English money. But that's more than their wages. So it's, you know, it's lunacy. Give you any twinges of kind of conscience doing that? Nope. Christmas? Nope, none at all. If people want to stir me up, then they can get the consequences of it. I mean, it's fairly clear, I suppose, Nick, that it doesn't pay to cross you. What would happen in the, the event that you didn't like this film? Yeah? Huh? What might be? What, might there be any consequences if you don't like this film? No, I shall probably, I probably won't. If, you, if I don't like it, it'll be because, because you've done a, a bad job, because I can do a better job myself. Do you understand where I'm coming from, though? Yeah, 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 yeah you don't want to end up floating down the Thames. Yeah. <laughs> do you think your business style will be um, similar to your dad's? Um, I should hope so, because he's been so successful, but there are also things that that I'm sure I'll do differently than what he does, just because we're different people. Mm. Yeah. I suppose I've got the best teacher, so if I can learn his ways, I can't go too wrong. Do you think you'd be as tough as he is? No, I'm not sure. Any time will tell. I'm not interested in hearing he's been taken away in an ambulance. I want my rent. Mm. All right, OK. I'm an easy enough person until somebody's taking a piss, and this guy's been taking a piss consistently. OK, thanks, bye. I'm really interested in hearing somebody's collapsed and been taken away in an ambulance. <laughs> What's going to happen if he doesn't pay it? <laughs> not going to tell you. The obvious is going to happen, but something else will happen as well. I have to say, I don't really understand. Well, if you were a landlord of premises and your, didn't, and your tenant, I'm talking about commercial premises now, and your tenant didn't pay his rent, what would you do? What would you do now? Forget about what I'd do, because, you know, I'd do what you'd do, plus something else as well. What would you do? Well, I imagine I'd go to court. Well, you go to court. You don't need to go to court on commercial premises. Right. So what do you have to do in a commercial property? Well, it depends what sort of premises they are. If it's a supermarket, you wait until the place is closed and you go along and take it over in the evening. You don't want to do it in broad daylight. It's also when people sort of can sort of along, you know, run along the sort of maybe get an injunction or something. So you do it at night. Depends on the premises. And obviously that's completely legal. Of course it's legal. Would I be doing anything that's illegal? Nick says no one has ever portrayed him accurately, but it is impossible to read. With front of house host to the great and the good of Sussex, Nick's in the background, a loner surrounded by people. You do your own shredding as well? Uh, this is the initial shredding. I think it's properly shredded. Or, in fact, well, I say properly shredded, it actually gets taken and burnt. You burn everything you write? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Unless it's sort of, you know, unless obviously it's uh, stuff that goes into files and things, but, but then we don't keep files in places where they can be uh, found either. The sequestrated properties were just part of the story. He was launching a corruption claim against the police. Unknown persons. Apostrophe goes after the S, doesn't it? An unknown person's blood was on that knife. An apostrophe goes after the S, doesn't it? I'd say it comes after the N, because it's an unknown person. You think it comes after the N? Yeah. Well, in that and case, shall I leave it off completely? Because I'm sure <laughs> it's not going to know either. So I'll leave it off completely. And he was fighting a new civil case brought by the Raja family, where he would defend himself. It's going through to Robert. Yeah. No, it's going through to Mr. Justice, who at the moment seems to be okay. It's got to be an improvement on those uh, previous ship bags. I mean, anything would be an improvement on them. He runs a family business, complete with ex-girlfriends like Tanaka. I'm going to get a Red Bull, OK? You mean you're asking me if you may have one? Staff are not permitted such drinks. Nick, you know I can have one. Yeah, why should you be any different from any other member of staff? Because I'm special. Yeah, why are you special? Because I'm you... the only black staff member. Oh, no, that's the reason, is it? No, you're no, not the only black special. member anyway. No, this is what not. Have, what have you got that's so special? Tits and rum. Mother of two of his children, Caroline, is the hotel manager. She knows Nick better than anyone, and I hope she might be able to shed some more light on him. I have known him for, what? 20, 25, 26 years, 15 of those very intimately. But we're no longer together as a couple. Um, but we are very close, as close as he can get without the sex. <laughs> uh, and very good friends. Uh, he's, he's very straight. Um, and it is only ever when people try to have one over him that, you know, he goes the other way. How would you describe the other way? Well, the other way is, you know, whatever. Uh, at the end of the day, really, everything boils down to money um, in the business world. And so if anyone's owing him money, um, he... he um, he will try and get his money by whatever means. That doesn't include killing anyone, <laughs> as people want to think lately. Um, we have the same relationship. If I owe him money, I have to pay it back. Never mind who I am, I, I have to pay it back. Um, Still? Yeah. Yeah, this this is him. I think it's it's just an obsession with with um, wealth and properties and just a accumulation of it. And it, it, there never seems to be a time when it is enough. Well, I'd have just said, what the fuck do you think's going on here? Where's my money and where's my property? And why should I have to put up with all this bollocks? I'm not interested in that. He's I know, he's had 150 grand. He better not be telling me that. Otherwise, I will, I, will, I will hit the roof. The other sequestrated properties were taking time to come back into Nick's possession. Lawyers were in court today on his behalf. I mean, do you want me to phone him? Because I know all you blinking lawyers are the same. <laughs> They're very slow at collecting my money. Hmm. Well, let's see the money. Yeah, all right. Well, let's see the money. A week later, solicitor Robert Berg came with a list of the costs the sequestrators had run up while managing Nick's properties in his absence. £3,000. What the fuck is all that about? 8th and 9th of February. Okay. Well, 8th of February and the 9th of well, August, what, what, what entry number is it, Nick? Because otherwise I'll lose it. 76. 76. Right. Now, they have put the total cost of the sequestration at £490,203. 
That's their costs. That's, that's their not what they've nicked of my money, is it? No, that's what they would say is only costs. Right, yeah, because there's a hell of a lot more money right. than that that's been nicked. <laughs> now, there were a lot of things on, on their entries that I would want to query. Mm -hmm. They sold 20 Church Road for a million pounds. One million and something. And 40. And incurred agents' fees of about 30,000 in doing it, which is an impossibility. Absolute impossibility. Where does it say that? Well, you'll find it yeah. there somewhere. Now, some of these things I'm laughing about, but in reality, I should go after them with a, with a submachine gun. Very kind to open both doors. Just go through. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. See you, next. Take care. All right. OK, Robert, you can't go wrong to the station. Okay. And you can always ask somebody. Yeah, yeah, I'll find you. And it's a nice warm day. Yeah. God bless. All right. See you, Nick. Yeah, thanks Bye. a lot. Paul Getty once told Nick, if you know how much you're worth, you're obviously not worth very much. Nick was awaiting news from Zimbabwe. He reckoned they'd had the biggest rise in stock market history, and all through filming, it quietly become worth a lot more. I was going to show you the stock market, yeah, in Zimbabwe? Yes. I think it was since I... Well, I don't think I know. It was since I spent a week in the stock market, morning call-over, afternoon call-over. I was there for morning, afternoon for a week, where well, the market just went crazy might be a coincidence, or it may be that people were thinking, well, hang on a minute, the richest man in the country is in the stock market. What's going on? I mean, this is one of the companies that we've, we're the biggest shareholders in. So that's one, this is another one. I mean, we've got like, something like 70 million shares. We've been buying them at 25, 35, 29, all the way through here. Uh, 26, 29, 28, 45, 28, 25, 22, 43, 29, 35, 36, 25, 53. Oh, they must have been generous that day. Right, with these same shares, they, they went to 200 last week. This is Monday's sheet. They opened in the morning at uh, 210, 220. The afternoon, they went 290, 300. This morning, they're 370. So in layman's terms, how much will you have made? Um, well, my son quickly calculated that yesterday morning, between the morning call over and the afternoon call over, we made three and a half million pounds on paper. But that will have increased now because this morning's call over was substantially higher than yesterday's close. So maybe it's up to four and a half or five million. That's just that's just what's been made just on the one call over. Um, but the prices had already gone up dramatically from what they were on Friday and from a week earlier. So really, I suppose, I mean, we haven't done the calculations, but probably the overall increase is more like 20 million, maybe 25 million, just in the last two weeks, in pounds, that is, in sterling. But why keep accumulating, I suppose, is the question, the key question. Well, money, wealth, or well, what else am I supposed to do? Hmm? Other than stopping people fucking me and stealing my money, but you can never do that effectively. Enjoy yourself? Well, I'm enjoying myself. Shuffling bits of paper around. Just enjoying myself. Spend it? Oh, I'm not interested in spending money, never have been. I can't understand how people people equate enjoying enjoying yourself with spending money. I don't don't I don't see it. I've never seen it. In fact, spending money would, would, would be the opposite to enjoying myself. Couldn't you see the way I'd nick the pen off of my lawyer? Mm. Hmm? <laughs> if you can nick something off of a lawyer, you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> A new property had been returned. Nick was back on the hunt for signs of mismanagement. It sort of looks like somebody's helped themselves, helped themselves stolen the, the door fittings. Not 
we've really got to be looking for, or smelling, is any damp dry rot. Yeah. Wet rot or dry rot. Ah, ah. Look, riddled with dry rot here and fungus growing. This is fungus, mushrooms. This is a property that we, we, we were by, paying, being charged, you know, tens of thousands of pounds on a monthly basis. Here we are. Come on, Mr. BBC man. No, 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 you need to be, be pointing down there. Look at it. <laughs> you realise I am the director of this? Mushrooms growing. No, I'm directing it at the moment, because I actually need this film as part of our claim, compensation claim about these, against these... I'm not sure that um, if we needs. should be used as that. There's got to be a bit of quid pro quo here, isn't there? I'm giving you, like, many thousands of pounds worth of air time. You can give me 100 quids worth of that section. Right, that's, you're in charge of that property now, or well, both of them. And all this, I want all this shit here, all cut down, and cleaned up. It's coming in disgrace. Do you think they, like perhaps some other people, were relying on the idea that you wouldn't be coming out? That's up? right. They were definitely relying on that. Absolutely. That's why a lot of this has happened. But what they don't seem to appreciate is if I wasn't coming out, they were in far more danger, personal danger, from what I was likely to do or what I would do, than, than by being out. That's the stupidity of it. Really? <laughs> and in Belmarsh, I've got nothing to lose and I've got an alibi. And I'm an expert at arranging things by remote control. But being out here, I've got to be far more circumspect in how I deal with issues of retribution. And that retribution there will still be. What are you laughing about, Rick? Yeah. Things to come. Well, remember these people are not only stealing my money, they're stealing my kids' money. You know, why should I put up with it? Why, in fact, why should anybody put up with it, especially me? Nick had agreed to show me Hamilton Palace, which had once seemed to be what all his fortune was for. I don't like all these blinking brambles going around the place. No. Come in. Built to last thousands of years, it would house all his valuable possessions, immortalising his wealth and tying it up forever so no one else could enjoy it. I'm not happy because I'm noticing the damage that's being caused to the young trees by a deer. The biggest private house built in Britain for over a century. Nick spent £28 million so far, but it's not been worked on for years. What are the plans for it at the moment? There aren't any plans at the moment. I'm dealing with far more important issues. Have you put its completion on hold, then? I haven't put it on hold, no. It's all the... Like shitbag, corrupt judges and fit up by the police. That's what's put it on hold. Is it true, Nick, there's um, a mausoleum in there? Yeah, no, there. That's the mausoleum is there. You see that the end section, that far east pavilion, it's got an additional floor underneath there. That's where the mausoleum is. So do you see this still as your kind of final resting place? <laughs> um, uh, I'm not thinking about it. We'll pass on that one. And what would you hope to be remembered for? <laughs> I couldn't give a fuck. 
people are always remembered for the wrong things. What do you think would be a suitable epitaph? <laughs> yeah. You got any more clever questions like that? They're entirely inappropriate. I'm still young and fit, and I've got a long time to go. It was now March. Throughout the film, Nick had still seemed keen to reinforce the reputation for violence that had got him in so much trouble in the past. But how real his threats actually were and how violent he could really be in pursuit of these aims remains uncertain, which is probably just how he likes it. Do you remember when I first wrote to you, Nick, what I, what I said one of the things I wanted to try and do was in a little way get under your skin? Do you think I've managed to do that? You, you are joking, aren't you? I mean, look at them laughing. <laughs> I've, I've, I've censored what you've been able to, to open me up to. But it's also hard to know what, what of the things that you say you'll carry, well, you well, will carry Well, well, it doesn't require a lot of a lot of intelligence to work it out, does it? Bearing in mind the, 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 the ultimate power and wealth that I have. But we're also governed by other things other than just power and wealth. You're governed by your own morality or your own conscience. Mm. That would, would... It's very difficult, very d difficult to retain morality in a world that is immoral and amoral. So where does that leave you? I'm uh, questioning that myself. And what do you think having all the things that you have gives you? What does it give me? I mean, pain in the arse, a headache. That's what it gives me. I'm sure if you ask any wealthy person, they'll tell you the same thing. I don't believe money brings happiness. I know quite a lot of very wealthy people who are certainly not happy. They're snorting cocaine up their noses, so they can't be happy. And power? Power is relative as well. I mean, the real power, the, the ultimate power, is um, is what one is prepared to do. And what, what are you prepared to do? Whatever is necessary. <laughs>